Well, here we go. This is the beginning of the wings, really. Uh, before I got started, though, I realized that I was going to need to have a little more table space. So that uh, the table that I built there, it's a rolling table, I talked about it previously, is just a standard 8 by 4 foot board. And I wanted to be a little bit longer because the wings themselves are really long. So I went ahead and I added another board. And then I used a carpet, as you see, I, I rolled you know, rolled one of those out. And in theory, I'll do the same thing on the other side and get one of those carpets on the other side and it'll be perfectly long and nice and cool. We'll see. And then begins. So here I'm pulling all the bluing off of the very first piece that I'm gonna be working on and getting it set and following the instructions. Um, something you're gonna see me do a lot throughout this video is, uh, kind of lean down over the instructions and read them and then reread them and then read them again just to really fully understand what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Um, you know, they, they tell you you're supposed to read the instructions fully before you get started. I did. And then it still didn't make sense a couple times where I, I still had to kind of go, what? You know, and get in there and really look at the pieces and hold them up and, you know, put them out there and figure out what the heck it actually wants me to do. So there's, there's a lot of that going on and... You'll probably do the same, uh, maybe not after watching this video, since <laughs> I'll suffer it for you. How's that? But yeah, so here it is. I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to uh, start working and and doing the very first cuts. In this case, dr you know, match drilling for this piece, and I talked to that here. All right, very first page. I'm about to make my very first cut. So this is the left wing spar. You know that for a number of reasons, but the primary one is, well, other than it telling you that, is that if you look over here, there's a thickener. There's this step thickener, and it's thicker, or longer rather, on the top than it is on the bottom. And the next thing you have to know is that the, uh, it's heavy, is that the flange, this right here, this part that rolls over, faces aft. So there you go. That's the left wing. Planes facing forward this way. So the very first thing you have to do is take this extension and put it on here. And I'm going to put this one on the other one here shortly. Uh, and then you put thickener double, you know, plates on either side of it and you'll rivet it all down. Going to do the match drilling now. Now why they didn't just increase the length of this by the five inches, five and a half inches that this piece is, I don't know. But uh, that's it. That's the first thing to do. Can't wait. About to get started. And there you go. I'm off to the races. Lots of drilling, you know, match drilling those plates and, you know, moving the Clecos, to, you know, to the previous hole and then match drilling the next set. And then it's back to the instructions to figure out what the heck am I supposed to be doing next. So I did, uh, I contacted Vans about those pieces that were missing. And I did have a, a recording of it, actually, of, of me talking to the gal on the phone. She was professional and awesome, and I totally deleted it. I, it was... I moved it in with the previous day's batch of videos instead of today's batch of videos. And so when I deleted that directory, uh, it went away. Whoops. But needless to say, the parts are on the way. They had no argument or um, comment at all. I, I could have probably said in, that anything was missing and they would have sent it. They were really very kind and courteous about it, which I thought was pretty cool. So as you see, I've got a slight format change here. I've got uh, two video cameras running at all times now, and I cut back and forth based on whatever I'm doing, trying to make it so that you know it's it's easier to see. Uh, I also have purchased a lavalier mic, and I will be wearing that going forward when I talk so that it sounds a little better. Uh, that first bit you heard did not have the lavalier mic. The one coming up will have it. But um, I've already broken it. <laughs> it's a, uh, the lavalier mic that I have is, is a, it was just a cheapo, you know, $19 mic that I could plug into my phone and talk to. 
uh, the camera with, and of course I've already pulled a wire and so now it, it's no longer worth a darn. Uh, so I've got a Bluetooth one on the way. So I will have a Bluetooth lavalier mic coming here shortly, which is, it will be nice. I also was going back and forth a lot here about whether or not I should prime those parts. I wanted to try the Allodyne uh, solution that had su been suggested to me previously, which is a chemical that you spray on. It'll kind of yellow it a little bit. Uh, sort of make it, it's sort of a, a chemical anodization process, I guess, is probably the best way to do it. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that, and I just didn't really want to wait, so I just went ahead and spray spray primed like I've been doing before. Uh, I'll try the Allodyne stuff later. Uh, thank you for whomever it was that reminded me of Allodyne. I, I like the idea, um, but we'll see. So there you see I've got, it's, you know, primed using my dark gray primer that I've been using everywhere else. Uh, and for now, it works. And now I'm actually driving the first rivets. These go really quickly. Um, they're very simple, standard rivet. I'm using the rivet gun because I could not get the squeezer to uh, reach around the flange on that spar that's just a little too deep. Uh, they do make a uh, pneumatic squeezer yoke that is designed, has a much longer uh, curve to it than the one I have. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things you're only going to use it in a couple places, and I didn't really want to spend the... Geez, they're like 150 bucks for these yokes, depending on which ones you get. They, they can be pricey, so I just didn't see the advantage of getting that one. And you know what? The old-fashioned bucking bar and, and rivet gun works just fine. The next thing that really surprises me is, is I'm actually far, much farther along than this video, obviously. These videos are always in the past compared to where I'm actually at. But I'm still just working on this left spar. Uh, I've not started on the right spar. In fact, it's still sitting exactly where you see it over there on the boxes uh, today even. And I, I've been, I thumbed forward several pages and nowhere does it say, and now start on the right spar. So it's like, uh, I'm not really sure when you start working on that. So for now, the uh, left spar is the only one I'm working on. We'll, uh, we'll get to the right spar when we get to it, or at least when the plans tell me to. I'm not sure if I, if I should have been doing it all along at the same time or not. I, I got the impression that's not the case, but eh, I don't know. So here you see me, I'm, I'm wrapping up, or unwrapping rather, the J channel that is used for stiffeners. And you'll see me measure uh, these things and then go cut. And I actually mismeasured the first time. Uh, thankfully, I, I measured uh, too long. So it was too long by uh, a quarter of an inch. Uh, so that was something I easily fixed later. Uh, I also make a mistake here that I will talk to here shortly. Uh, let's see if you can catch it. Maybe not if you don't have the plans in front of you. But uh, again, mistakes are going to be made, but don't worry. They're, they, you know, they're not a big deal. Uh, and just about everything you can do, you can fix. Uh, I made a mistake. I made a single drill hole before I realized, wait, that's the wrong thing. And I went back and I fixed it and I talked to it. But you'll see, here I am, you know, bent over the plans again, rereading, because I'm constantly trying to figure out what in the heck. Also, I'm using the table, moving it around for the cameras. I'm trying to, trying to remain cognizant of the fact that the whole point of this is so you guys can see what I'm doing. And so it's important to have the, the cameras in such a way that you can actually see. Um, so I will try to not just show you my you know, back of my head the whole time so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. More reading of the plans there. Um, but uh, so yeah, the rolling table is so far pretty handy. But here you'll see me start to drill. I'll, I'll make a cut and I'm like, this, this can't be right. This just doesn't look right. And I go on and talk to that. But I also did some leveling, which I'll talk to that now. And here's the first lavalier mic. So one lesson that I had learned previously uh, that you saw specifically with the fairing, the vertical stabilizer fairing and using the fiberglass epoxy is use your level. These spars, which are amazing, amazingly well built, by the way, have a stepped uh, metal runners on the forward side and the top is longer than the bottom. I've got it flipped over right now so you can't see it, but let me let me flip this up a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> this 
So again, this is a left spar. And if you see here, you've got this really thick metal up top. This is the top side and right here's the bottom and they kind of have these little steps. Well, you can see that the bottom one is shorter than the longer one. What that means is when you lay this on your flat surface, it's kind of warped. And if you put the level down here at the end, you can see there's definitely a warping. And that's not good as we start doing these match drilling. So enter yawn scrap of wood, insert it underneath there, and boom, we're perfectly level. So uh, I, very important, the last thing you want is a twist in your wings. Um, don't want that. So just be careful of that when you work with this to make sure that you get this level. And there, that was the hole. I just drilled the hole, the, the, the wrong hole, if you will. And then I'm just like, I'm not satisfied with this. This can't be right. And I keep looking at it, I keep looking at it. And then I finally realized, wait, I think I know what it is. And I, I pulled all the clamps off and I went back and, and started over again. This is also where I, I noticed that it was a quarter inch too long. By the way, those uh, Clico clamps are handy as hell. Um, I have 10 of the half, half inches and 10 of the inches. And so far... I've used them both equally. I think 10, 10 and 10 is probably the exact right number. Uh, so yes, do get those. Those are on my inventory list and are suggested by Vans and they're quite handy. And here's where I talk about the mistake. <clears throat> so I did find a mistake I made um, just in aligning things more than anything, not with this. <laughs> So you have to cr cut two J stiffeners or stiffeners out of this J channel, one really long one and one not as long. So 92 and a quarter inches, 53 and three quarters inches. The documentation is a little unclear on how you place them. At first, it looked like you placed them on top of one another like that and you put it here. And that's what I did at first. And then after rereading and looking at it a little closer, that's not right. You actually put the long one here and <clears throat> butt it up to the end that you riveted on earlier. And then the shorter one goes here and it will nest, it will rest about two and a half inches of it will rest on the inside of the longer one. And that's what's going on right here. So mistakes are okay. Not a big mistake. I caught it. So hopefully uh, that's the last one. We'll see. Oh, it probably won't be. I mean, in a you know a plane this size, there's there's going to be mistakes. There's just no way around it. I mean, you're going to make mistakes when you build them. Don't be afraid of them. I mean, so far, no mistake is so bad that you can't fix it. And absolute worst case scenario, you can, you know, get a part to replace it. I mean, just don't fear the mistake. I mean, I think that's that's something we had talked about previously at uh, one of my gatherings of friends who build. They're like, you know, you're, you're going to make a mistake. It's going to happen. Um, and just come talk to us and we'll tell you how to fix it or help you fix it or something so yeah and there i put my headphones on because gotta listen to music sometimes i listen to my, the music really loud uh in the hangar itself through my speakers but then i kind of feel bad because it's like you know i've got you know i'm usually out here all by myself but uh i don't know i don't want to bug the people around me that may or may not be there <clears throat> and here um so i just switched to my uh, corded drill from the pneumatic drill now someone might wonder well, why'd you do that uh, the simple answer is because the darn compressor was just on constantly. I've got like a 40 or 50 gallon compressor and it was just running constantly because those pneumatic drills are incredibly inefficient and it was just, you know, it was, it's loud. The darn thing is loud. That's all there is to it. And, and even though my headphones are noise canceling, uh, you know, it sounds like an airplane in there. <laughs> I just don't, I, I was done with that. It's like, oh, you know, what? I'll use this corded drill. I've had this corded drill for like 24 years now. It still works and it'll continue to work. The other thing I noticed is that the, uh, the uh, extension cord uh, for my, uh, the primary extension cord that I have coming off the wall that goes to my compressor was starting to get hot. 
So that told me that, okay, I need to get a much thicker uh, extension cord over there for more amperage because obviously that extension cord that I was using is no bueno. So that's a, another issue that, okay, I need to need to resolve that. Normally it doesn't run for very long, so it wasn't a big deal, but with the uh, pneumatic drill, it was running constantly for a very long time. And I was like, okay, that's not okay. You'll see me, I'm continuing to make sure everything's level as we're doing these drillings. I you know, got the level on that plate as I, and I slide it down, make sure everything's level as I'm doing these, uh, the, the drilling to the J channel. I don't know how important this process is, you know, whether or not making sure it's level is, is important or not. It seems like it should be, so I figured I'd keep going. Worst case scenario, it's just something extra I'm doing and wasting my time, but I don't think so. I think it's a, a good idea, or at least it seems like a sound idea. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it. I'm also using Clecos every other hole. I started out using a Cleco on every single hole, um, but that was just kind of pointless. And there I just walked my fingers down counting it. It was like, I think if I remember correctly, it was 85 holes uh, per side times two. It was, so there's 85 Clecos there. And then... Uh, then I'm making sure, again, I go back to the plans and look again just to make sure, you know, keep reading. Even though I'm, I've already done something, already committed, it's like, okay, let's make sure we're doing the right thing here. So you're going to do that a lot. And then it's a matter of just flipping it over and leveling it out and doing more drilling. Not super exciting, I realize. Sorry about that. But uh, someone had suggested that I slow down these videos because uh, I had the time lapse going way too fast. And I uh, don't know that that's, you know, if that's something you guys want me to slow it down, I'll slow it down. If you guys want me to speed it up, I'll speed it up. My big concern is that most people don't watch much more than five or six minutes of a video. So if you have these really, really long videos, most people just don't bother watching them at all. Uh, but uh, this might be a special case because you guys are an audience that are actually wanting to do this or are actively doing it. So you're, you're viewing it more as instructional. Um, so maybe you guys will watch them all, you know, if they're really long. I, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, again, I'm more than happy to do whatever. So this is uh, continuing to drill. A couple times you'll see me uh, get up and kind of walk away because, you know, you drill two or three hundred or five or six hundred, as the case may be, holes, and after a while your hand gets tired. So it's like, okay, I need to walk away for a few minutes. I try to edit most of those out so that you don't see me just standing around going, phew, but uh, <laughs> sometimes you'll see the remnants uh, of me doing those things, which is kind of funny. The next thing is, is, is as you uh, get farther and farther down here and, and do, do more and more of these holes, you start to realize, you know, I'm just adding Clecos to immediately take them off. And here I'm sending a text message. My wife, uh, I think, was wanting some dinner or something. Yeah, that's that's a message to her. Always pestering me when I'm out in the out in the hangar working on important stuff. Eh, okay, lunch is kind of important. Here's another voiceover lavalier recording that I did while I was out there. Well, there you go. So this is effectively the very first page down. I've drilled something like 400 holes. Uh, it's all match drilling. The idea is you're match drilling the J-channel stiffeners with the holes pre-drilled in the spar itself. Uh, they're in the on the lower side, and remember, you know the lower side is the one with the shorter stepped bar. There are some obvious um, screws that, that are going to be here, the, the countersunk screws, and you do not uh, match drill three holes on either side of those. So for example, the uh, screw holes here, so one, two, three, according to the plans, you don't match drill those, except for apparently down here, I think it is, where it's four holes. I'm um, sorry, this one. Yeah, where they've got it is marked as four holes on the plan. So I question whether or not that's a mistake We'll find out in the future. It's not a big deal to match drill again later on down the road. But that's it. That was a lot of holes to drill. It took me three and a half hours, believe it or not, to get this all set up and drilled. 
Uh, right now, though, the wife is pestering me to go get her some lunch, so I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll probably be back out here tonight to keep going. Looking forward to what's coming. A lot more stuff. Fun, fun. Once I got back out there, I actually looked at the plan and I noticed on like two pages away from where I'm at, there is a different diagram of what each hole is and whether you should match drill or not. And that diagram seems to imply that it should be two holes on either side of those um, nut plate holes. So, okay, which is it? Is it two or three or four? The, the plans are a little inconsistent depending on which image you look at. The nice thing, like I said, is it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's one of those things that we can match drill those later on down the road. Once we do get the J-stiffeners put back in and are actually going through the process of riveting them in, um, there will be skins being riveted in at that point, and it will be definitely obvious as to where there should be holes or not. So at that point, you just run a drill through it. Easy peasy. And here I'm looking over the plans again. That's just... Eating M&Ms. I seem to remember I had a handful of M&Ms at that point, too. And so at this point, what you do is you run the drill through every single hole. Um, you're, just, you're just drilling all the 332nd holes using the number 40 drill to, you know, step them up inside. There's nothing to match drill. It's just about making sure all the holes are the correct size. The end. And then you flip it around and you do it again on the other side because there's 400 holes. So seriously, you're going to drill, I mean, uh, a lot of holes. <laughs> and it just, it's backbreaking. It's like every once in a while, I'm like, ugh, awful. Here I just locked my drill in drill mode and just went down and <laughs> did each hole. Uh, it was sad. And now it, it here's where I'm going in reading over and over again. It's, it's has you do the countersinking. So the countersinking of these things is actually really important. And I say that because they, they go into great detail as to what you're supposed to countersink at what depth. Let me sum it up. The, all of the nut plate rivets are countersunk just to the depth of the rivet head. All of the other 332nd or number 40 holes are countersunk slightly deeper because they will have a skin resting down in them. Whereas the nut plate holes are just there to hold the nut plate, the, the, the rivets are just there to hold the nut plates on. So the skin will actually lay flat over across the top of them. So you don't have to do uh, a deep cut. You should always start shallow though and test, 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 and then, you know, increase the cage ever so slightly so that your cutter will cut to the right depth, and then once you have it locked, you do the whole thing. Um, but this, this took me a while to, to, I had to reread that many times to figure out what exactly it was trying to get me to do, um, because the, the, it was just kind of confusing. And even here, I was taking a break, I'm rereading again, because I'm like, really? Am I, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Now, of course, I'm pretty certain I was doing it correctly and, and that I've definitely got it to a good place. Um, happy where it's at right now. Everything's going really well. But uh, also, you'll see here I'm using wooden blocks to uh, when I clamp it down because I don't want to damage that beautiful yellow anodizing. Um, I'm not sure you can damage it. I mean, it seems so hard. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a very, very stiff piece of metal, uh, which it should be. But uh, here I'm going through and doing all that countersinking and again, stopping and reading to make sure. Uh, and I, I talk to that at length here as the day winds down. This was, a, this was a really long day and it was good. And I had another one today. So lots more video coming, guys. Lots. Well, so we come to the end of a day. Um, I've spent about six and a half hours working on this one spar, match drilling, all the J channels, countersinking, just for the nut plates, um, just for step one and step two here. Step three 
I have to go back and countersink everything else. And it seems like the depth is different. That's why they call them out separately. I had talked about that previously. Um, seems like uh, not a lot accomplished for a lot of time. And I think it brings up the point that you can't rush. You can't rush this. Because, you know, even though this took six hours, I got another one sitting over there that I have to do that hasn't even started yet. It just takes time. Um, pretty cool, though. This is big and bulky and heavy. Uh, very, very, very stiff aluminum. So, I mean, it should be, obviously. It's the main wing spar. But um, awesome. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoy this. Did a lot of countersinking. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a lot more countersinking and then uh, rivet all of these nut plates on. Uh, these are the fuel, fuel tank attach points and whatnot. So, awesome. Glad you guys could watch this. It was pretty cool. And uh, I'll be back out here all weekend doing this more. See you there.